Yeah, what's up guys? We're here with my man Boris Boris. Tell them uh, yeah. the name of the YouTube channel. Uh, it's the Happy Pill Project. Yeah, like, like, share, and subscribe. Yeah, also leave a comment. Happy Pill Project, Boris. So we're gonna keep touching the reversals and the drags and all that stuff. But everything we end with another entry on the leg. So you start to see the combinations and how to attack the body from top to bottom. So one of the ones that we went over recently was the guys like this. We started like this. And everything will play into a storyline over the next couple of weeks so that you understand top to bottom and how we're going. You'll like this. So I described when the person had the thumb grip in, you weren't going to be able to get through the thumb grip. Because when you go to elevate them, they go like this, and now they extend out, and you're going, damn, I couldn't do anything about this. Okay? This could play two ways. Either I risk it first and go like this, and I'm like just like this, and I realize like, I'm not going to get them up in the air, or I started from here, okay? Later on, you're gonna see that you're gonna be short on this elbow sometimes from the sequence on this. So that's why you're gonna have to go to this leg. It'll make sense as we go through the progress on it. So I go like this, whether I pick him up, and I realize like he's not going anywhere, but I have a chance to grab this arm. So one of the ones that we did recently was we dropped this grip to grab onto this grip. And now, as I fall back, I place my feet facing in the same direction. So as I'm falling back, my feet are placed like this. So both of my feet are facing that way, okay? You're like this, and there's a reason. I know some people are gonna put this foot this way. I want the knee line facing that way, so why would I have the toes facing this way, okay? Because later on, either I'm gonna break this arm now or potentially throw this over his face and now I'm coming back into a normal plaza and coming back this way. But remember what I said earlier, that the grip is so long that you're going to buck, you're going to buck the arm, meaning this, you're like this, you just grabbed it and you fell back. And now I'll get this arm over, either it's going to be like this, but when you drop this leg to hit this elbow, it's going to be like this, you're going to get it to bend. The question is, can I keep it in this pocket? that it's nice and tight here, make this massive turn, get to this point, come up and break the hip line, come up all the way here and finish the summa plata. I think it's unlikely. I really do. I think that there's so many uh, lanes to cross that you got about six sequences in there that he has an opportunity to escape. So it's hard to imagine, like, you're going to get to that spot Without him getting out on a high-level player, when you have about six sequences to cross, not going to happen, right? But let's start first, and then we're going to get back to that leg. So his arms like this, he's read the thumb grip right away, right? So if he had both, we're like this, pummel inside, I grab, I fall, and I'm like this, okay? So I'm going to ask you to do two different versions yet before we get to that leg. One is I just take this leg out and I just throw this triangle up. My only concern at this point, don't worry about anything else, man. This leg, you can adjust this off of here and turn this perpendicular and they tell you to do all these things. Worry about one thing, they'll tell you this other thing. They'll tell you to cross your feet. Man, don't worry about crossing your feet. Worry about getting this kneecap on top. Because if I can get this kneecap on top and Ethan starts to pull up, he'll bring me up. But they're going to tell you to put your calf on him, cross your feet, and then arch your... He's going to go up. And now you're like this with this massive pocket, and he's going to shred you. He's going to get you off. So the moment you're like this at this point, you went this way, you threw this leg up, worry about getting the hamstring. I want to collect his artery on this, on this ligament right here that's sitting here. Because when you throw this up, I'm like this. Now that guy's sitting on that artery. Even if I never brought the other leg into the equation, and I'm like this, Ethan will tell you I'll choke him out now. I haven't crossed my feet yet. You okay? Yeah, yeah no, it gets, you, get, you get really dizzy really quick. Really, really quick. So don't worry about it. I know they're going to tell you, I'll cross your feet, put your calves on. Man, high-level guys are going to get out in two seconds. You have one opportunity. Catch the calf on the back, and the bend of your, the bend of your kneecap should be sitting here because this ligament's going to sit right here on this artery. So if he goes vertical, I don't even need that other leg to finish. But we are going to finish. I'm going to feed you two before we go to the leg, right? So on the first one, you're like this, and you, he just touched. Right away, I grip, right? 
as I pull back, I insert both my feet the same way. I took this leg out, I threw a triangle. On your second one, sometimes they're gonna be pulling away on you. So I take this leg, it's gonna be too far. So I put it on his, on his, uh, on his shoulder line, because I'm gonna go super slow with this. I'm gonna push his shoulder and kick it as I transfer his hand past this hip line. So what you're seeing is this, I'm pushing, I'm transferring, but at the same time, I'm taking this leg out to make this elbow buckle. And we're looking like this. When you land here, you care about one thing, is taking this leg out. I am pausing it. You should have put this leg out right away. This leg in its foot position should, whatever, your, whatever flexibility you have, when you take this foot out, it should land as far up the line as possible. I have to switch my hips. So when you were like this, right? And now, where, don't worry, let's talk about this leg. I just pushed him. I bucked this over. As this is clearing, my leg's out here because I'm holding on to his elbow because I want to transfer my hip this way. So this leg should have been touching at the furthest point. That's why when I actually go on a totally different subject, people roll their eyes and go, oh no, not one of those stories, <laughs> right? So, so, but reason I go so critical about shrimping and not worrying about going left and right, that's the same shrimp. I'm like this, I come out like this. Off those toe lines, I'm pulling myself in. Isn't that the same thing? I'm like this, off the toe line, pulling my hip out, right? Off the toe. So when I say like, stop shorting that thing, because you never learn the combinations of how the muscles fire. You never learn to take your hip out. So when people go, you really got to do that? Okay, so now you're going to be short on this because you never knew how to take your hip lines out. You never knew how to change your angles because you're so short on the pullout. I'll see you guys do this. I'll tell them, take your leg out, man. And they'll come like this and they'll go, and the leg's right here. My leg was out here, man. My hip is coming out to face this way because what do you want to do? You want to jump over to the side. I want to catch you, man. I want to catch it before you ever get that jump. I want to touch this leg before you ever get vertical. I want to go on a toe. I want to face this way. Even the end product of me breaking this arm is me coming up like this because I got to stabilize and break. So all my kneecaps are facing this way. My hips are far out. Are they like this? This is how you'll see. You and they're sitting like this trying to finish them with blocker. And their legs are like this. And they go, do you understand the mechanics behind this? Like, this is, how are we going to do this? This is, a, this, I mean, it's just so unfunctional, wrong. So we said two. One is, I'm going to ask you to kick the shoulder out, transfer, and take the leg out and just reattach the hip. Don't worry about the leg yet. We're not going to get there yet. So you had two. You had one with a triangle, right? You're here. Triangle is the first one. You're here. I said you peel, feet touch same way. I come here, I throw this leg up, I got that neck, okay? Second one, I push this shoulder out to transfer clear, take the leg as far out as possible, and then let go of the elbow. I start reaching with this hand up in the air. The reason this hand's up in the air for one reason, right? I wanna get to this hip, I don't want you jumping over. If for some reason I jump, I wanna collect you and then we go for the ride that I become top player. So I'm like this, okay? I can take this leg out, come up, and I'm here. That's all I'm going to ask you to do. You have two positions. Let's probably go to the leg. Feel like this. And now he put his hands here. Okay. So let's talk about this first. Okay. So that everything resembles. Because potentially if you do this right, the other stuff never occurred. Okay. If I take his hand and I see people reaching like this, I want to, I want to do a reverse cow hand on this. So when you grip this, you're right at the crease. He's gonna, he's gonna flinch when I do it, because it hurts. Because if I start pulling this and driving my shoulder, this is what this happens, this is what this looks like. And then potentially I lace this up, right? Or I do this so aggressively like this that I go into a drag, right? But that's how it played out first. That I was so focused, he was like, oh, you wanna put that thing there? Okay, so let me make this painful for you. Because I want this hand to get past the center line. I'm like this, and now I'm gonna pull this hard. But Eighth realizes, and he's yanking this leg back, so I come right here, and I extend this out, because I don't want to let go of this, and I'm holding on for dear life. I'm trying to figure out, what do I do with this? So potentially, I told you before, I throw this up. But I'm like, man, he really wants this arm back, and he's not coming forward. So I take this leg, and now I said it could come here, but I want to turn him, because he's going to get this arm back. Right now, 
If we look at him mechanically, he's in a pull-up position. He can pull himself up. I, I'm pretty sure. I almost saw him do it. Uh, 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 what is that called? He almost did a muscle up. Meanwhile, Tab is banging them out like they're like like he's eating breakfast. Like it's crazy. He can if Tab's here. I don't know if he is. Man, he can do muscle ups. Crazy things. He used to do muscle ups with seventy pounds on him. That's impressive. Okay, he almost got a muscle up, but he could do a pull up. I know that for sure. So I'm like this, and now I tilt him. He can't do a pull up anymore, right? Because the the blade doesn't come in that way. But before he could pull back, he'd go back the other way. Yeah, he would have gotten his arm back on me if it's straight like this. So that's why I changed the angle. Because I, w I want the arm to be pulling like that. It doesn't go like that. So now he's lost all functional strength to the arm, where I can pick and choose things again. So now when they say about invisible BJJ, you just don't realize how it changed your angle, and now you have no strength again. So all this strength that you had, and if you decide that when I kick you out, and you decide, oh, you're not going to change yet. You're going to come back. Oh, now you're going to hit with a triangle now. So you can mix them up. It's like, okay, what did you want to do? You want to come back or you want to leave? Because if you leave, I'm going to force you to leave because I'm going to change the angle. But if you come back, I'm going to throw it on your shoulder. Okay? So that's the reason for this kick because he was like this before. He's strong here. He's going to get it away from me. Take this leg out. I go, okay, that's not strong. You can pull and run all you want. But now I'm starting to transfer. So now I'm like this. Take this leg out, Zeke, not like this, okay? As far out as possible, right? Because most likely he's going to do something else. He's so far away from me right now that it's not likely that he's going to get this jump and clear me to the side. But what he is going to do is try to pick me up, right? He's going to start going vertical, and now he's going to pull his arm out like that, right? So I want to make myself as heavy as I can at this one circle right here. So when I'm like this on this angle, I'm like this. Okay, pick me up now, man. And now when I cross my feet, I'm here heavy as dispersed away. And if I really, we can go into so deep on this because if he picks up at this point and I'm like this, I'm going right back on this leg here, right? Because if he picks me up, and that's the leg we're going to attack eventually, but from a sitting position. But if he goes up on me, I'm back on that leg, but my kneecaps are facing that way anyway. So I'm ready to transfer from quadrant quadrant. I'm not stopping this attack, okay? So when you kick them out, try to change the angle because it'll help you later because you're like going to be like this. And now you're going, oh, Mike, I'm in this weird spot. No, you're not. You are not in this weird spot. And if you catch him early and he's going vertical on you, okay, so I catch his head so he doesn't go up. So at any point, I could always catch his head. And if he wanted to physically pick me up again, and he's like, okay, so I'm going to come back to this leg again because... If you're so strong that you could pick me up, at some point you're going to open up this leg again and I'm going to take this leg again, right? So the, the onslaught doesn't stop. So when you do, right now, let's go a little bit deeper, right? When you get to this point, so I explained all these details up here, and now you're like this at this point. You're here, you kick this out, and you're like this. And then I see this confusion. Everybody's doing this right. They're here. One of the things I want you to emphasize, right now my hips are slightly tilted that way. I want them as tilted that way as possible. So when this leg comes out, even if you're short, do one thing for me. Tilt them this way. Because I need this kneecap later in this pocket to tack this leg. So many, many, many factors. It's like four or five things that this kneecap facing as much this way as possible will help me. For, besides my leverage point, to my transfer, to my finish in my omoplata, to my arm bar. There's so many things that because my kneecap was facing that way, they'll benefit me. So you're like this at this point. I'm going to ask you now, you can cross your legs at this point. We're finishing this way. So I want to just point this out. Uh, so most people are doing it right, so I don't have a problem with it. Uh, some people weren't. So I want to take this hand, and I told you I don't want him jumping over. So my first reaction, if I've gotten control of this elbow, is to catch this foot because he's going to lift this foot to jump. So I want to be able to hold this foot line. Number two is, okay, sometimes this grip will be on top. Sometimes it'll be on the bottom. Right now, we're on a bottom grip, okay? When you're on this grip, my secondary hand's going to come up and reach for this elbow. So as I start using this leg, so there are three things I want to do right now. I want to pull this hip because I want to fall. I want to take this leg on my figure four and keep taking my hips out this way. 
I'm going to keep taking my hips out. Stay back up. So as I'm pulling, I'm pushing with this hand. So I'm doing three things. I'm taking this leg and sliding my hips out. I'm here like this, and Nathan doesn't want to go. So I keep jamming this foot underneath him this way so that I can buck the hip and get it down to the mat. So there are three things at this point. I don't stop jamming that. Come back up. I don't stop jamming that through that pocket. So I'm sitting there like this. I'm jamming, 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 and now I'm pulling this hip down. When you get to this point, I want you to focus on one thing. Do not care about you getting up. I care about you taking this hand and just putting it over. Once this elbow's cleared this hip, you own this man. Whether you decide to let go of this, doing so different. I don't need to do anything. I can bury this. And if Ethan goes up and I kept my feet, I'm already ready to ride anywhere I want because he does all the work for me off of that grab, right? So let's now get to the point of the leg, right? So once I show this, you have three sequences to drill to the end. All very functional. You like that? You like this, you like this, you kick this out. I told you transfer. And now when you come like this, you're super low. And this arm's coming out and you're like this. Stay right there for me. Come back. You're like this, okay? So this kneecap's already in here and you're like this. And you're going, damn, I'm about to lose this guy out because he's gonna wet noodle it out. So I was like this anyway. Remember I was like this, okay? Only thing different is I'm gonna take this leg and throw it through this pocket. As I pull back, I'm going to not come and go all the way over. I'm going to lace it and fall back to rip this way because on the fall is when I'm going to finish it on the inside. You can transfer your legs if you want. Most likely, you're going to have it on this side when you fall back. Okay? So you're lacing the leg in the center and coming up. You can go this way. The only reason I'm telling you that most likely you're not going to go this way is because the stabilizers are on that side. So you're like this at this point, right? You threw this over, you went like this, and now you come up like this. How are you gonna make this transfer to come this way? You potentially could, but everything is in his benefit on this side. His kneecap, his shin, his hand, every single thing. So when I first came up like this, I'm like this, and the, it benefits me to come this way. So when I rip it this way, it's gonna have, he, first of all, the kneecap doesn't bend this way. And I have more likelihood of being in an isolation point this way than that way. So as I pull back, I'm lacing right underneath. And now we're going, depending on, most likely Ethan's going to come this way. So now I'm on the inside ready to rip. Okay, guys, let's partner up. Whatever. Anyway, next time I went, a pastor. So they're reading your hands. So that's what you're reading also. The, hand, the, the game at the highest level and this, um, I'm friends with Travis Stevens, who won a silver and a bronze at the Olympics. So I'm recent, really good guy. Ata got to meet him for the first time, really good person. And, uh, and when I asked him, I was like, hey, Chad, what's the difference like, between the silver, the bronze, and the gold at the highest, highest level? Like, we're talking about Olympics. Like, BJJ is nowhere even equivalent in the competition setting. Those people got to win their division. Then Asia, it's like, just so hard to get to the Olympics in judo. He said, Mike, whoever gets the grip, that's the difference between the three. The reason I say it, so what's the difference? That game is the game that's been around forever, and they look at it, so eventually BJJ will get there too. It's blowing up. So he's like this. I already re read his grip. His hand was like this, then I'm like this, right? He's like this, I'm like this, right? So I'm reading his grip, and then somehow I see people going, that wasn't where, remember how we started? I was like, Oh, you know what? He was like this. And I was, no, keep it up. I was like, this. oh, I already read that grip. I'm coming underneath. There's no barrier here. But then as I'm starting to come under, he switched that thumb. Okay, that's not going to happen. I read his grip. And that's when I say about the passing. I was like, I read your sit. Like, it's not possible. Like, you have too many holes. So you're reading the grip. You're reading the grip. And I'm like this. And I went, okay, we're about to touch. And he puts his hands on Ready to rock and roll, man. Right? I already got, to, and now I'm not letting go of this. Because now i got to reverse count here. I'm going to increase the pressure. And he's going to tell you, oh, man, it hurts. And he wants to let go of it. He wants to transfer it. Yeah, okay, now we're ready on this drag. Right? But you got to read the grip. So I'm not, I see people going, somehow ending up with this hand like, how did that hand here? That hand was here. Right? He went like this. So I'm going to somehow take my hand and get it over here. That's not going to work. 
Okay, so he's like this, hands up, thumbs in, man. Okay, I'm not, I can't let you go, man. I can't let you, but I can't, also can't elevate you. So I've got to control this hand. You put your thumb there. So I want to jam this guy forward. I want to make this uncomfortable. And now he wants it to go this way because it hurts. So now as I let go of it, we're like this. That's the grip I had, right? And then the only thing different is because he was far. If he was close, then I could lace this hand and now kick control of this pocket. But he was like this. I'm not going to get this hand. I'm not going to get this hand in that pocket. I won't get control of this elbow. I told you, man controls that triangle, controls the game. Man controls the hip on the pass, controls the game. So how did, but how did Gordon reverse Buchecha? All these, he got in that pocket, man. Got in the pocket. Can't let anybody get in your pockets and vice versa. He's like this. I go, oh, okay. I'll put that hand there. I can't let that hand go back. So now I go, oh, okay, but I also know you're going to pull it back on me. So what do we talk about the U setting? I can't let him stay because if he gets back to here, he's strong on me, right? So right away I go, okay, okay, now you're out of that U, right? And now I got about maybe a second before you get straight on me and get this hand back or put yourself, so I have a free leg. Maybe I throw a triangle up. I go, oh, he's trying to run away from me? Okay, now it's over. Now, well, I wouldn't say it's over, but now I have totally isolated this limb by itself. I still got it. And I'm above the elbow line. So potentially, maybe I'm even closer, right, where I just go, okay, maybe I'm going up with my plata. Maybe I'm going back to a triangle. Maybe I just take my legs and reset them into an, a kimura. I could go a lot of different places depending on the distancing, okay? Let's do it again. Like, you're not going to do leg locks, you know? If you're an older person that wants to learn the game in a self-defense setting, you're not doing leg locks. So... Um, and you, you should know them, though, and you should know your transition. If you are a young man that has aspirations of competing at the highest, highest levels in the sport, you better know leg locks. You better know your entries. You're only going to get most of the matches. There were one at ADCC, were through heel hooks, right? Gordon, um, uh, Tyra Tolo, right? You better know leg locks. If you want to be an elite, elite black belt, you better know leg locks. If you want to be an elite elite black belt. And I know some people zone out on me when I say, because they're like, ooh, well, this is getting complicated. And I see it. Um, I've been around the game for a long time. So sometimes when I view it, I'm like, why well, didn't you get it? Uh, whatever. You've just been around it for a long time. I'm crazy for it. Uh, but you have to. Like, you have to. So I know there's times where you want to zone out. But even if you don't want to do it, you're going to get to, and everybody will go to, you're going to get this young buck that uh, a young kid like Jared wants to go up against you. He's going to tear you apart. And not because you can't, you don't do the move. You just don't even rep it. So you don't know the flip side of it. So when he goes in on the inversion, comes, you're just like, okay, okay tap, tap right away. You, but you don't even, if I ask you, what did he do? He got to my heel. No, I go, no, what did he do? What did you do wrong? And they'll go, I don't, I don't know. So you don't know what you did wrong? And they'll go, no, he got to started with you. It didn't start with him. He just fed off of you. So try your best. And I get it. Try your best to stay, stay focused. And I saw people at the end like, oh man, this is getting too. Try your best. I care about the whole room. So if you get good at this, you push the room to go to another level. The room matters. The room matters. We all here to push each other and get better. So do your best to stay focused on it. And I get it when you don't want to. I get it. So I'm here to push you and call you out. So let's, uh, let's rock in two minutes. Let's do it.